What's going on? Welcome back to the second half of this tutorial on how to make a realistic snowy mountain. This is basically a continuation of the last video I made about this topic. It's mainly focused on how I render an image out of Blender so that I can use it for compositing in Photoshop. We're going to replace the sky with a photograph I took of clouds to make the background a little bit more interesting here. Since we left off, I made a couple different variations of this mountain in Gaia and then used those height maps for the displacement of the two planes in the background. And you can see if I select and move these planes around, the mountains move in our viewport. And it's the same displacement setup as the original, I just used different height maps to change the shape of the mountain. I've added a camera, it's an 85 millimeter camera. Uh, I've lit this scene with a plugin called Physical Starlight and Atmosphere. It's a really cool plugin. I use it for a lot of my outdoor landscape scenes. So once I have the scene all set up the way I want, one thing that will help make this look a little more realistic is having some atmospheric perspective, which basically means like as the mountains go off in the distance, you know, they'll start to look a little hazier. Click on layer properties and then click mist. Up near the render view, click on this little arrow and where it says combined, click mist. Now this is a grayscale image which you can use as a mask in Photoshop. And then if you click on the world tab, you can change the depth where you want the mask to begin and end. So think of it like this in terms of a grayscale. The darkest tones are completely masked. The gray tones are semi-transparent. The lighter gray tones are even more transparent. And the brightest tones are completely, are completely unmasked. One more thing I want to do before we render this out is under Render Properties, if you scroll down a ways under Film and click Transparent, it's going to remove the sky. So that way you can export this with an alpha channel and you'll be able to easily drop a photograph or some image behind the mountains as a background. If you're having any trouble rendering these out, you can uncheck adaptive subdivision and change the levels in the render. Now that I have this all set up, I'm going to hit F12 to render. Once the image is done rendering, click image, save image, and I'm not sure why, but these menus don't show up in the screen capture. So just click image, save image, and make sure that to get a transparent background, you have to select RGBA, which is the RGB with the alpha channel. I have it on 16-bit PNG with zero compression. Then once that's exported, where it says combined, click that and select mist pass. Now we're gonna do the same thing export the mist pass so image save as you can select rgb or black and white and then same thing 16-bit png with zero compression now i've opened the image in photoshop i have the render the mist pass and the background image that i'd like to use first thing i'm going to copy the background image and paste it onto our scene rotate and resize it to fit and then I'm gonna drag that layer underneath our render. And since it's transparent, the background will show through. And now we're gonna use that mist pass to add some depth. First thing I'm going to do is add a new layer and head over to the mist pass, select all and copy back over on our new layer, click channels, and then down here, click this plus and then we'll add a new alpha channel and paste the mist pass onto the alpha channel. Now control or command click on this thumbnail and that will make a selection of our mask. Click on layers again and select this icon to add a new mask. And now we've added our mist pass as a mask. So I'm gonna select this cloud brush. You can find cloud brush packs um, or you can make your own, but that is a story for another day. Set the flow to 21% and the opacity around 50. 
So make sure that the layer is selected, not the mask. I'm taking a sample from the cloud and I'm gonna just start painting over the background. And if you notice, it's only showing through where the mist pass allows it. The further back in the image, the more of the brush is applied. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I kind of want to emphasize the light in the direction that it's coming from. So I'm going to import a photograph of a lens flare from a headlamp that I shot. It just desaturated the image and I'm going to resize it a bit. Change the blending mode to screen. I'm gonna add a new mask and just mask some of the edges of the headlamp photo and maybe a bit of this flare. That looks good to me. Now I'm gonna bring it into Lightroom for a few more edits. Uh, usually I just come right down to the tone curve and just add a little contrast. Slight fade in the shadows. And just making some minor tonal adjustments. I'm gonna change the blue to be a bit more teal. Also gonna add a little blue into the shadows. Of course, some film grain and that should make it look a little more like a photograph. All right, that looks pretty good. I hope that helped and I will see you next time.